the earth be silent before him. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody's beautiful faces this morning. Amen. Stand with us if you are able as we sing our hymn of praise. Oh, how I love Jesus. That is found on page 10 of the green hymn. Once again, oh, how I love Jesus. We will be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. Okay. 
Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we so love you. And we thank you, Lord God, that you loved us first. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. Yes, sir. That you are creator of all things. And we truly thank you that you are the judge of all men and women. We thank you, Lord God, that we're able to come out, those who are able, to the house of worship this morning to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray for those who could not come out today, those who are sick and those who are shut in. But we thank you, Lord God, that we know your word says by Jesus Christ that they are healed, Lord God. And so we stand on your word. We're standing on your promises. Lord God, we do ask for forgiveness of our sins where we're falling short of your glory, Lord God. Sometimes there's things you've asked us to do that we have not done. Sometimes there's things that we do that we know we should not. But Lord God, we thank you. It says in your word that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and you are just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we thank you, Lord God, that you love us that much, that you sent your son Jesus Christ so that we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So Lord God, we bless you today. We thank you, Lord God, that you're in our midst, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we can just, through the prayers that are said, through the songs that are sung, through the word of God from the man of God, that all might just give you glory, Lord God, and that we might do things your will, your way, for your glory. We thank you, Lord God, for your church, your church triumphant. We thank you for your church universal. We thank you, Lord God, that it goes beyond denominations, Lord God, but it goes to being the body of Christ. We bless you, and we thank you for how you're just leading us and guiding us in our lives. And even in all that we've gone through, Lord God, even in this year, Lord God, whether there's been sickness and disease, Lord God, we thank you that you brought us through. We thank you, Lord God, whether we've gone through grief, Lord God, we thank you that we get comfort in you, Lord God, and that our hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. We thank you, Lord God, that as we do our day-to-day, Lord God, and you know what our situations are, whether it's something physically or whether it's something financially or it's something relationally, whatever it is, Lord God, that we can take all our problems to you. We can take all our burdens to you, Lord God, because, Jesus, you told us that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So we thank you, Lord God. We also lift up a special prayer today for our pastor, Reverend Swanigan, Lord God, for continued healing of his body, Lord God, from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. We also continue to lift up our young, um, Rams is one of our young men, Lord God, continue healing for him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. And we thank you, Lord God, even those that might be sick in body but maybe have not said or others that we know, but we know, Lord God, that you're with them. We thank you that wherever we are, because we've accepted Jesus Christ as sacred space. And you tell us, Emmanuel, you never leave us, you never forsake us. You are God with us. So we bless you and we worship you. We thank you for this service. We're glad to be in this service one more time. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. temple guard 
and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. Yeah. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many heard the message, believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. And it's the high priest who was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yeah. whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, yeah. that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, yeah. for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind yeah. by which we must be saved. Oh, I have read for you Acts chapter 4 verses 1 through 12. That is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks. be yeah. to God.
Thank you. Amen. Thank you, uh, Sister uh, Mallon. Um, Dr. Perico, uh, if you uh, want to come to the pulpit, you can. If not, you may stay there with your lovely wife. It's up to you. But we'd love to have you here. Uh, I want to say thank you to our Sunday school teacher, uh, Sister Griffin. She has given us a pretty hard, I can say, um, a lesson this morning uh, on enlarging our vision, Unit 3, the Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 15. If you have not seen it, that being said, I don't have anything else except the pastor is not here. I was going to break protocol and ask uh, Dr. Perico to help me here with the uh, with the supper. But we're going to wait until next uh, Sunday.
Pastor Swanigan for this opportunity and to say a prayer of healing for him now and for his family. You know when a family member is, uh, is down with something, the whole family is uh, suffers from it. Let us pray quickly. Father God in heaven, we pause in prayer for total wellness and wholesome healing of our pastor and his entire household. Amen. To blot out all transgressions against thee and restore them fully, whole, together once again, build and strengthen the family as only you know how, as we Mass Memorial Church stand in the gap for them today. We thank you, Lord, it is in Jesus' name that we pray. As the church said, Amen. Amen. Our lesson today is from um, Acts chapter 4. Bravery and daring rescues. 
performed through mankind's God-given talents and gifts. Humanitarian over God's creation have noted, documented, and taken all as some of man's greatest moments in the act of bravery. Rescue sitcoms on television gives us a glimpse of rescue efforts and attempts in diverse climates and environments. Hearts of Heroes, a weekly telecast program presenting acts of bravery and daring rescue from tactical agencies and entities from our United States Coast Guard, tank and fire rescue teams, air support, mountain and surf rescuers pledging their support to their community, municipality, and their country. Skilled professionals in giving support in the rescue from loss, danger, in the art of swimming, saving those who are doomed to watery grave, animal rights activists consumed with love over the slaughter and mistreatment of domestic reservation wildlife, even friends and family taking the initiative to take some time out for members that are well advanced in age and for the children's sake who cannot fend off life's unwholesome conditions and yeah. impairments, leaving people wondering is there really a good and gracious <coughs> God above that really cares for me, just for me? There is a word from the Lord. Heroic acts of saving someone's life from impending doom continually raises the eyebrows and piques the imaginations of humans from all walks of life, emotionally moving their spirits into a quiet place of reverence, peace. Jesus said, and we have certainly heard the joyful cry that Jesus saved. Jesus saved to the utmost, then transformed our hearts into a loving, pliable peace that he can now reclaim. Thus we inherit a new spiritual life. Moreover, we must pay close attention to what we have heard or we will certainly drift away from it this is a message declared first by the Lord, then his angels, proving to be reliable, saving you and I from every transgression and disobedience. Tell God, thank you. Thank you. Over 3,000 years ago, the Son of God entered the world to heal, comfort, direct, and connect us to the truth and living God. Amen. He came and ransomed us back from the clutches of sin, sickness, and spiritual darkness. He came to save us from life's storms and thistles that usher us into perditions and disruptive behaviors. Yeah. Now in some of the twilight paradigms of, li of life, some have squeaky feet and blown out knees asking the doctor to heal us and save us from the agony of this aging process. But have we forgot the touch, the touch of God and from Jesus that heals? Have we forgot the touch? The touch that saved the woman with the issue of blood. Remember her? The word that touched the centurion servant, immobile, paralyzed, upon his deathbed. Even Baal, the son of Beor, who loved riches from insatiable greed, was rebuked twice saved by his own donkey, speaking to him in a human voice, restraining the prophet's madness. Also in the region of Decapolis, the man with the speech of impediment, death, miraculously restored, astonishing, beyond measure. 
Your Bible records countless miracles of Jesus Christ and of his disciples healing the sick, casting out devils, and demonic spirits of people vexed with possessed and oppressed spirits. And even the lame began to skip and jump in jubilation of the goodness and the mercies of God. When Jesus sent his son to us, each, each of us was given the choice to serve him or refuse his grace. Jesus goes several steps further than our hearts of heroes, rescuers. Jesus sets us free as he delivers us from all Again, all our filthy rags of sin. Jesus further encouraged us to maintain a mind of compassion towards one another Amen. and not to forget to meet often Amen. with one another and reminding ourselves of what God has delivered us, freed us from and kept us from falling back into. Mankind can save you from a certain doom or demise and you feel like you, you're good to wake up alive again if not dead. But when God saves you, you're saved forever. Amen. It really doesn't matter what may come your way, even death. Why? Because Jesus is life. Amen. Christians never die. We don't go through some of the pain death transition non-believers do. Jesus said in his word, if you believe me, follow me. Amen. Then pick up your cross and obey me. Amen. We as Christian believers have a pass. Jesus grants us this pass when it's time for the appointment before the Father to give an account of your deeds, whether they be good or whether they be bad labored here on this planet Earth. We transition and leave our earthly shell behind because no flesh shall ever enter the presence of God. God the Father has a miraculous plan for each of us, for each of his children, even you. His plan is to save as many of us, as many of his creation as possible. While the enemy Satan is doing his best to kill as many as possible. Some of us have not grasped this yet. This is why the message of hope and salvation needs to be preached and heard in all four corners of the universe because there is no other name Amen. besides the name of Jesus Amen. that will save you from all of the world shakes, battles, and rolls. Amen. When Christians pass away here, we are ushered up by angels into the third heaven. Please believe the Bible Amen. and the pro prophetic messages that come to herald you there is a resurrection from the dead. We pass from death unto life. Christians go home to be with the Lord. Tell God thank you. Jesus saved us from all the cliffhangers of life. And then go to step further. He ransoms us from the depths of hell gate into his marvelous life presence. Knowing today that Jesus is the only authentic and real saving power should move Christians everywhere closer to the master and non-believers into submission to the Holy Spirit and to the one and only true God. The reason why we preach to say this is because every man-made relic that has been or will be erected above or compared to God will crumble Amen. and will pass away. Amen. History speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. The 
word of God and the proclamation of Jesus continue still to this hour. And so does men of correct, corrupt minds, depraved and wicked hearts, devise evil intentions. Spreading propaganda and teaching false doctrine to the world's itching ears, led away with divers' lust. But many of those who have heard the word believe. There was around 5,000 men, women, and children. And in my conclusion, you see, once God's word is heard, it is planted itself in the hearts and, and mind and soul of a person. And as for me, it was cultivated and groomed by men and women of God, showing and directing me the way I should go. As I looked cautiously with a critical eye at the teaching and the teachers that were before me, I grew spiritually. The voice of the Holy Spirit expanded and, I, and spoke to me sometimes in unmistakable commands. The connection to Jesus is real. We all should want to hear a word from the Lord often and every day. Drawing nearer to God instead of nasty folks who only want to take advantage of you and take you for what you've got. It's not good. Jesus is real. His words are true. That's why he is referred to as the true and living God. And that's why I stand here before you today. So my friend, there is no other name besides the name of Jesus that can save you and I totally from the present distress of the world amen. that we live in. Let the church say amen. amen. Tell God thank you. thank you. I want to open the doors of the church today. If you're here today and you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, Step out and come to Jesus right now. He is the only one that can save you from this present distress. He's able to keep you if you want to be kept. And to our friends and family on social media, I appeal to you to step out on God, to launch out into the deep, and to make a strong change in this coming year. Come to Jesus. Jesus is waiting for you. He will help you. He will fix you. He will heal your broken knees and your aching feet. Rescue your mind. By simply saying yes to Jesus. No matter what your situation is or how big it is. Jesus will fix you. You may be seated. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. We are going to break here for communion. Communion is necessary. Dr. Perico is going to assist. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And what a wonderful lesson by this pastor. Can we just give him a hand? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Reminding us that there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And every now and then we need that reminder. As we transition into um, this holy uh, communion moment, I take our minds back to Calvary take our minds back to the place where it all started. The place where we were able to come to an understanding of not only the blood, but the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm hoping and praying that we have taken that to heart. Amen. 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 
ye that truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God meekly kneeling upon your knees. And my assumption is that uh, we will remain where we are. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do we have a general confession? Yes. Amen. All together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and be well our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to thee. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We collect all together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, all together. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. And the church said, Amen. A prayer of consecration as we get ready to partake of his body and blood. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon a cross for our redemption, who made there by his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute in his holy gospel, commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. <clears throat> Hear us, O merciful Father. We humbly beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, 
may be partakers of his most blessed blood and body, who in the same night, hallelujah, that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. And the church said, Amen. At this time, myself and the pastor will partake of the bread and the blood. At this time, we take up the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and together we eat. In the like manner, we take up the cup of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the blood of our Lord, and together we drink.
Let's see. 